Okay, but you haven't put it up. I haven't pasted yet. yet. I actually realized the fans are really enjoying this in the chat. Want to give a shout out to... Uh, are they? Yeah, Let's International see. Master Lawrence Chen. Lord oh, Trent. Trent's still around. Trent's Candidate Master I'm James sorry, Coleman. I'm sorry we couldn't get a game before this. And everybody in the Twitch chat seems to be guessing along. So the fact that everybody is enjoying playing along, I'm going to I'm gonna give everybody the, the follow link to our next diagram before I even paste the position. Okay, so perfect. everybody can join that board, and hopefully we don't crash the server, but you can follow the link. I just pasted in the chat. Also, and I want it to be noted. Yes. If you saw my game against Trent yesterday, you would be, like, cursing me out. I would be. It was, like, it was beyond passive. Okay. Like, beyond passive okay i didn't know that well as yeah. the uh as the as the uh, observers come flooding in here i really haven't had this many people following us in an analysis board this isn't testing that we do very often that's my get out of jail free card if we run into a bug because <laughs> it's very difficult to emulate testing when there's 195 observers on the board instantly so here we go all right your puzzle number three yeah. starts Wait, i don't i don't have it on the board yet no i'm pasting it right now okay Okay, it is white okay. to play in this position, and yeah. the clock starts now. Okay. Good luck, my friend. All right, I'm down a bunch of pawns. What is my goal here? So, let's see. What is my goal? That pawn on h4 is moving fast. Is that pawn on b7 important to me or not? All right, I'm thinking a strange idea, which I think makes some sense. I'm thinking about maybe that doesn't make sense. I was thinking about like King actually to G7 to try to get the rook off the H file. Because if like king g7, I was thinking like if the rook tries to stay on the h file, rook h5, and I was thinking ideas of like rook d8. But the problem with that is oh no, there's no problem with that. I like that. Yeah, I kind of like. I do kind of like that. And so that means when I go king g7, the rook has to leave the h file. And where is the rook going? The rook only has one square, and it's e8. Do I have some tricks here? All right, king g7, rook e8. How's my time? Oh, I only have five minutes left. Uh, King G7, Rook E8. Just, just an FYI, you've crossed the line where you have to All get right, this I'm just one right. King G7. Over. Okay. Uh, I like I like where this is leading, even if I haven't calculated all the way through, because I don't want to bring my king all the way to get that H pawn. Okay, this was a tough one, but unfortunately, you got it wrong. The uh, no. this, this particular 15 minute drill is over. The time okay. is the time is out with that with that loss now. Before we dive into the specifics, the overall one overall thing to reflect upon was that you you, you were two out of three, but your time management was off, mm -hmm. right? So we know that to be something that you know you're a perfectionist, 
-hmm. You have uh, um, the mentality of a mathematician, as we know, mm -hmm. as you as you get your PhD from MIT, and that you're not comfortable moving forward until you know the solution, right? There, there, mm -hmm. You don't like that area of gray and doubt, which I understand, but sometimes yeah. part of being a chess player is knowing that it's a game and the practical time management is just as important as whether or not you get, you know. So in this case, unfortunately, the the reason why king to g7 wouldn't work, even though it it's... Eight? Sorry, yeah, rookie eight is played, and yeah. and there's simply no no concrete follow up for white that that ensures good drawing chances. Yeah, um, you you're not going to be able to really the, the big issue is probably black is going to end up with two pawns left. Mm -hmm. um, you know, lines like king f six likely run into rook takes e three, and after king takes f five, moves like even rook to c three might be enough to do the trick for black. Ensuring gotcha. you, you're you're not able to get the pawns, and then he can play h3. Um, mm -hmm. This isn't this isn't like super easy. I mean, but I think that I think that um, I was calculating some of these lines as you were to try to remind myself of what I was going to tell you was wrong with king g7. But mm -hmm. again, on rookie eight, we can calculate other moves. Um, you know, going after the h pawn. I, I I don't know if no. There's no point in playing rookie four. I think you would just go for this. And probably, again, even just taking b7, because the worst part about this position for you is I don't even need two pawns to have winning chances. Your king... Right, my king is cut it, off. Right, yeah. is so far cut off from the c pawn that um, that you're going to lose all of these rook endings. Yeah. I so, should have I should have given it more. I don't know why, but I only really looked at king g7. So I, I think that... About, yeah. I think you misinterpreted when I was giving you the push. I was actually about to say that you've crossed the line where you better get this position right. Because if you get it wrong, it's over, right? That's what I was going to say. Was once you oh, gotcha. once you've crossed under five minutes, yeah. you have no choice anymore. At this point, you better get it right, right? So it's okay. It's a good lesson. Gotcha. We're going to reset and do another fifteen minute drill right after this. But let me tell you the answer. This is a uh, this is a really kind of famous position from a real end game. I don't remember what. Um, it's not okay. a composition, uh, but the the uh, the drawing move here for white is one that um, teaches us a, a good lesson in geometry the move e4. Now, after you've sacrificed this pawn, you're actually taking away the escape square oh, from the rook. Oh, yeah, it's the same idea, but yeah. You're taking away the escape square from the rook, and the game is a perpetual. Black can't find a safe square. Huh. So, after e4, there aren't really any other options. In fact, uh, pushing h3, I wasn't sure if you should take or... What would be the best way to win? You know what might be the best way to win is even this move first, like an inner mizzo. Mm -hmm. And if the rook moves, you then push. Um, I wonder if I wonder if this is what white should do. Well, wait, uh, but can't you just what? Yeah, okay, no, 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 I'm following. Yeah. Um. So so if e four. Okay, I mean, the, the draw is just F takes, and you get we have this really, really right. kind of cute thing. I'm just trying to, because I'm enjoying the process of making sure that after H3, um, yeah. I guess also taking H2 and then here can't be bad, because after King takes, you're just so far ahead in terms of time um, that probably Black is, is hoping to get a draw in this type of position, but um, something tells me that Black may not be drawing anymore. Uh. No, this is this not still a draw? I don't know. Well, let's see. I mean... Here, let's try... Uh, yeah, so king b6, I guess. Right. Now you're going to have to... Rook f5? Well, right. maybe rook h3 to... But to see, but the, if right. the rook moves off, I'm in a position where I could even just take here. Like, I don't even have to queen first. So you have to be very careful, right? And the point is, I don't know that I don't know that you're like you're far enough advanced. Like my king uh, is is pretty well within. Let's see. Let's just I think. I, I'm sorry. I just want to. Maybe I'm wrong about this. Yeah. No. I think. No. You're right. No. No. I, actually, you're getting there in time. Am I? Um. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. This is the draw. Huh. So we have to back up. This is yeah. That was. And that's why I was actually thinking instead of like rook h5, maybe just rook h3. So we avoid any sort of like tempi on the rook. Well, it, it doesn't really matter. Because, 
because it doesn't really matter. I mean, you have to advance. Yeah, okay. I Although I guess you would still be drawing here even with just like a check. Because if I go back, you perpetual me. Mm -hmm. And if I go in front of the pawn, um, you know, now... Now you're even further away. And, yeah. yeah, I'm guessing... Well, I guess it's it's probably similar to the same. It's similar to the same thing in that you can always check me. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you may also draw just by doing this. Yeah. So, but okay, I guess worst case scenario, um, the the point is e four is drawing regardless, and it's it's white's mm -hmm. only way to draw. But I'm. I'm, I'm still, I'd have to calculate or look at the database. I prepared the positions, but I haven't looked at my analysis in a long time. I think that gotcha. I'm wondering if there are other ways to try to win. I, I don't know. My first line I went for was this, right? That was interesting. And after you moved up, I went for this. Uh, Remember? Gotcha. Yeah. I guess this is a little bit riskier. But I don't need the pawn. I just want to get rid of your rook. All right. A silly question. Is yeah. there is there any benefit to playing rook d8 after king g7? Let's go back up and see. Well, no, not here if, if I'm giving, if I'm taking with Oh, check. sorry, e8, I mean. Sorry, oh, e8. e8. Rook e8. My apologies. Well, I guess now the the main issue is that you're not even threatening to get a queen. Right, gotcha. your, your rook that isn't comes with tempo. The rook isn't behind the pawn. Right. So, yeah, uh, so you can ignore. Yeah, I was we thinking can... rookie two, rook f two, but that doesn't really help. Yeah, if black right. can even draw on things like this, then black is just drawing. Like, I, let's just like, let's just right. use our. Let's just say, like, what if this was possible? I, I don't. Th I think this is too far, and the extra pawn is not helpful to you because it does nothing to change the position of the rook. Yeah. No, this is certainly too far. Yeah. So this would this would definitely. You know, I don't even know, but yeah, you're already you're already in the, you know, yeah. in a bad yeah. position. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so you know, one thing about rook rook and pawn endings like this is that when you have multiple passers, those end games are just a lot of calculation. You're not relying mm -hmm. on like on Lucina theory, right, or Philidor yeah. theory. Like, and a lot of those positions are. Um, are, are just tricky because there's a lot of like, I go there, he goes there, I go there, he goes there. You're trying to calculate vari variations in your head. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have some sort of pattern or philosophy to apply, you're relying purely on calculation, which first of all, under time pressure, how often do we reach rook endings with hours left on our clock? Most of the time not, right? I mean, yeah. so the, you know, it, it's easy in, in, in studying when we're being scientists about the game, right? When we're being chess theoreticians to mm -hmm. want to figure out the, uh, the answer. Yeah. In a practical game, um, you know, you have to calculate as quick as you, as you can, but you should try to apply ideas you've seen before. Like, this isn't, an, this isn't a very common idea. This is kind of a cool, sort of tricky position, fun for the 15-minute drill. But mm -hmm. one thing that is interesting is there is a principle you should just, you know, in, have ingrained in your thought process in complicated rook endings, which is, which is always that, you know, it's not how many pawns you have left, but who is threatening to get a queen first, right? And that mm -hmm. tends to change the game. And, okay, there are exceptions to that. If someone's got five pawns for a rook, they can sack. I don't know. But for the most yeah, yeah. part, that's, that's some... So, so the point is, allow yourself to consider candidate moves. One of the things that goes wrong in people's calculation is they get married to an idea... Mm -hmm. Right before they've seen how that person reacts to slow internet, you never get married to someone until you see how they deal with slow internet, right? Mm -hmm. Or like yeah. you, you don't marry with someone until I don't know. We could insert a lot of things here, right? I mean, so let's just say that you don't want to hop in bed here. <laughs> just kidding. No, mm -hmm. you don't want to get married <laughs> to somebody before yeah. you've done your due diligence. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Got to make sure they know differential equations, right? Basics for people like you, right? I mean, yeah, if, exactly. uh, you know, if she can't solve, uh, say In, something. Insert math equations. Say, insert, say something that Goodwill Hunting would say, right? Then you're not going to yeah. marry her. We know that. So um, <laughs> anyway, uh, the point is in an end game where people go wrong because there's a lot of calculation is they mm -hmm. get married to one move before considering multiple candidate moves. And mm -hmm. in a rook ending where there's all, all kinds of pawns that are passed, push yourself to consider more than a few options before you get married to an idea. That's all. And then, mm -hmm. and then you increase your chances of finding something like this. Gotcha. That's all. Um, okay. okay. So we're going to reset this clock. Okay. The 15-minute drill is uh, going to start again. 
How's everyone doing in the chat? Yeah, I've, really. I've been focused on uh, the 15 minute drill. Is everyone enjoying it? Seems so. We've got peak viewers yeah. right now. Um, good, good deal. We're only a half an hour in. The show's going to continue to grow. And after our two rounds of 15 minute drill, John and I are going to play at least one or two games of Hand and Brain, where he's the, uh, he's, uh, we'll, we'll do maybe one of each if we have time. 